candidate will be asked a question specifically. They'll start, we're going to start with David Greenfield in a moment. We'll continue alphabetically with the question. Every candidate has the ability for one minute to respond to any question that they were not asked, if it's not their turn. I hope that's all clear. Certainly, I hope it's clear to the candidates. Uh, a couple of notes. I was asked to announce that, uh, again, if you have questions, if you're an audience member and you have questions, please utilize the index cards in the back. Get those questions to Jewish Press representatives. We'll get them up here. The ones that have not been addressed by our panel will make it into this forum, so please do that. Uh, secondly, the questionnaire in the back, if you please fill in. Uh, you're always working with prizes, as we mentioned, plus, of course, the information is very important, so you can do that. And I was also asked to announce that there are still plenty of empty seats. Now, the person who told me there were plenty, I'm not sure what plenty means, but it does look like there are some empty seats. So if you want to be able to tell your grandchildren that you sat at the historic debate uh, back in 2010, I recommend you find your seat now, and I thank you. As uh, some of you may have come a little later, so let me reintroduce our panel, all of course uh, editors of the Jewish Press. Uh, in order of the um, in order of uh, of the questions that are going to be asked, we have Ellie Shamsky, Jason Maoz, and uh, Shlomo Greenwald. <laughs> Ellie Shamsky's question will go first to David Greenfield. Quick, um, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm just to correct something. Every question actually we're going to ask will be for all four candidates. I'm sorry. Right. So in order. And we'll switch each time who we'll get who we'll answers the questions. Right. Yeah, I'm going to reiterate that again. <laughs> and that is that every candidate is asked to address the question. The person who is actually asked to get two minutes, and the others get one. And we are now ready for Ellie Chomsky, directed at David Greenfield. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you to the candidates for being here. As a member of the City Council, you would be an integral part of the City's budgetary process with both the Mayor and the Controller. You would have to find the proper balance of higher taxes and reduce spending and find ways to help get our city through these difficult economic times. What makes you more qualified for this task than your opponents? We'll begin with Mr. Grinfield. Thank you. Thank you for the question and thank you for the opportunity to speak about this important issue. I think if you look at my background in terms of the work that I've done, especially uh, the work that I've done in the organization that I founded, Teach OIS, the hallmark of really of everything that we've done is to try to find money that doesn't exist and bring it back to the community. So for example, at Teach OIS in 2006, we went up to Albany, we advocated on behalf of a tax credit, and we brought back for everyone in the community $330. In 2007, we went up to Albany with a group of leaders, we brought back millions of dollars on behalf of the community for our schools, millions more in free computers. In 2008, we worked with the city, with Mayor Bloomberg and Councilman Simpefelder, to bring in a new program. And this was a perfect example. This is a program that already existed. It was a federal Title I program where the federal government had set aside hundreds of millions of dollars for the community, but we weren't getting this money. And so we worked on that particular program to come back and to actually create a program where now we have free tutoring for thousands of kids in over 50 schools. And I think ultimately, let's be honest, I'm one city councilman, God willing if I'm elected. The most important job that I'm going to have for my community is to deliver for the community to bring back the results, and I think that my experience proves that I can bring back those results and deliver for the community. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question, and it's a very important question. I am proud to tell all of you tonight that I am a conservative Republican who believes very strongly, very strongly that the first and foremost priority of your next city councilman has to be to make the cost of living in the city lower. We should not be raising taxes. We should not be looking for yeah. the to get all that out of every hole that we're in. Now, uh, I, I'm hearing Mr. Greenfield uh, speak about the money he's bringing back. But every time a, a politician goes and explains to you how much money they're giving you, with one hand, you better look in your purse or your wallet for the other hand. Exactly. And so, so I think what distinguishes me very clearly is the fact that the money is there. The money is to be prioritized for the issues that are important for our community, which are very well our education, which are going to be things like repaving streets, upgrading our transportation infrastructure, 
And my experience at the community board has been integral in understanding how this process works. Routinely, there are projects that go on. Let's say, for instance, there was a road construction work, a resurfacing project to fix the street that took place, and then a sewer repair took place, which meant that all the work that was done to fix the road had to be torn up to repair the sewer, and then you had to go back and resurface the street again. So, case in point, there's a lot of experience that we've had at the community boards uh, looking at how to avoid wasteful spending in government on redundancy, plus we work very closely with the community to assess the priorities for what services are needed. So if you're going to do a balance, if you're going to balance out the need for tax revenue and spending, the first place to look at is how do we cut wasteful spending, and I agree very much with my colleague here, Mr. Lazar, on that. There's a lot of ways to be cut out in city government, and uh, at the same time, we always got to hold the line on taxes, especially when people are hurting the most. Thank you. Joe Lazar. Thank you. I think my experience speaks for itself. Having been a budget director for a New York City agency, having been the director of finance for the New York City region for the State Office of Mental Health, and then having been the regional director for New York City for the State Office of Mental Health, where I managed a $4 billion a year mental health system in New York City. I know how to manage budgets. I know how to read budgets. I know how to find money that's buried in budgets. And I know that before we go out and tax people, and I know that before we go out and we raise fines and revenues on the backs of the working people, we have to find the waste that is in government. We have to go out. It is the function of the city council to oversee, to pass the budget that the mayor uh, gives them. It, is, it should be the function of the city council to go and look at agency budgets and really in detail find where that waste is. Unless you know what you're looking for, you don't know how to find it. I've been there, I've done that, and I want to continue to do it on behalf of the citizens of this district. Thank you very much. Um, Me personally, I grew up in this city. I live in this city. I know the city's problems. There are a lot of problems that I'm not sure I will be able to solve, but I will definitely try to tackle them. Now, there are a lot of programs out there, some that really help the community out a lot, and that a need to make better, and more funding needs to be put into there. But then there are programs that some, there's money being put there that has no use for our community. It has, it's not helping us out. Today, we're in a recession. For some reason, our schools, the prices are higher. We are still paying the same price to go to private schools. And, the, and for Metro cards, right now, they want the government wants to shut to close down to close down Metro cards for any students that go to school. That means they'll, that will increase another thousand dollars a year to take your either your, drive your kid to school or to even take bus or or trains. If anything, this another problem is there, there's not enough jobs in our community, and and. There are, I'm going to have a well-trained staff that is going to observe all budget opportunity building programs. I will definitely look over all vigorously, all city agencies, ones that are not useful, and I will find a way to decipher them and make them better. Thank you very much. Uh, I know that there are candidates on every issue that would want to again respond. I'll ask them is to utilize the four minutes at the end when they wrap up to refer back to somebody's question. I think that's because of the rules, the way they were announced, I think that's the most efficient way to do it. I was asked to welcome 